we are collaborating, Metro North and Metro Central are collaborating on this information session. We have colleagues from um, CEI, we have our services, mani services desk manager, our technology manager, and they are all going to give you some valuable information today. You'll also learn some information about some e-learning processes which we feel are important in your school and will help you uh, should you encounter any issues at your school. Um, so, from way of introduction, um, I'm Sharonda Brown. I am the service desk team lead. Um, I will see the agents at um, Cold River. So, um, with myself, Lincoln being the um, technology manager for uh, the service desk, um, I am then with him, and we have in total, I think, 16. Yeah, 16 agents that are outsourced um, and then. And then we have 16 agents at the desk, so those are the people, the, the agents that will take the field, the calls when the schools phone in. So a couple of years back, um, I'm just going to go give you um, difference between initially when we started out, we were help desk and we just started logging calls and then sending it off to the technicians, um, uh, giving the caller reference number, and then the technician would go and sort it out. Um, we were then asked to really look at the way we do things. Um, we then moved into a complete different um, way of, of rendering service to the service um, to the schools. Besides just logging and flogging calls, we now do more than that. So we assist them with all the ICT related issues. Um, we we are capable of doing first line support um, and then transferring to the technicians in the in Metro Central and North if we're not able to assist the user any further. Um, it was then said that we need to become a centralized um, schools IT um, service desk. So all, like I said, all IT calls are logged and action for resolution from our side. Um, we are single point of contact for users. Um, report we we report on service dis disruption, service requests, and all um, calls must be recorded. And the reason why we say all calls, ICT related issues at the school must be recorded is that when um, a school is complaining that things have not um, have been disrupted, the service has been disrupted for a while. We at least have history. Um, on that particular school to say, okay, yeah, there is something there. Let's see what the trend is and see how we can actually um, resolve that. We resolve incidents and um, fulfill um, requests that comes in. Uh, there is a difference between an incident and a request. An incident is something when it's broken. A request is when something is new. So, for example, setting up a new a new PC or a um, setting up of a new computer lab. That would be a service request, and then an incident will be my internet was working, but um, it's not working anymore. So that we just need to be uh, made aware of as well. Then um, how to log calls at the service desk. We are contactable on three different platforms. Um, we have our service desk number, which is 0218344699. 4690. Um, that is the main number that the schools will dial. They will then get diverted or routed to the first available agent. Now, we have asked um, schools in the past to please not hang up if somebody doesn't speak to them immediately. It could be that our agents are all currently busy or logging um, or just ending and wrapping up calls and they will take. So it might be like a second or 10 seconds or the most that you've got to wait. But um, the school mustn't hang up if they don't come through to that number at all, because this number is not available during load shedding. And unfortunately, Kales River at the service desk, we don't have any generator. So when it's load shedding in the area, we're unavailable for two hours. But however, they can then send a WhatsApp 
and as soon as our systems are back online, we are then able to, to log that call for the user. They are then the school can either then contact us via landline, via WhatsApp, or they can contact us on our school's email address. Our services are we available from half past seven till four o'clock. That's Mondays to Fridays. We are um we we are available during school hour, school holiday hours as well between up to seven and four, but we encourage our staff to take the leave during that time. Um, so we might be um, short staff, but we are able to still be functional at the at the service desk. If you do, if the schools do phone in any time after four, um, they get routed to a voicemail which then is sent to this email address via a, a voice clip and um, we log the call in um, the following morning or when the voicemail comes through to our email box. And then information required when logging a service request. Sometimes a school will uh, log a call via the admin person. And um, we don't have the full context of what the incident or the request is that must, must be logged. So that is why we ask for these specific details, um, an alternative contact number if the landline is not available. So for example, if the admin person logs the call, she or he would need to give the person that's they're logging the call on behalf of details. So, for example, if Carl is logging a call um, on behalf of me, he needs to give them my contact details, my name and surname, so that I can then, or the technician can liaise directly with that person. Obviously, the technician will make first contact at the admin office and then be obviously directed to the um to the to the person that logged the call, the detailed the detailed description. Um, sometimes when we have users phoning in, um, all they will tell us is my PC is not logging in. And if you ask the admin person any further details, and they say another cat teacher just told me to log the call like that, and then that takes a bit longer in the in the um, call resolution or the call response because now it means we log the call as my PC is not logging on on. But then we have to phone that person and say, okay, what is actually really wrong with your PC? So that by the time the technician gets there, he can, he will know what to do, or he could maybe remotely assist the user um, on the phone. So the this details are, are of utmost importance to us at the service desk. And then our escalation process. So if the call has been logged um, by the school. And with the third day, so for example, if a call is logged today and by next week, Monday, um, the call has not been actioned yet or you have, the school hasn't received a reference number, you, the, schools, the school is then um, advised to make contact with our service desk manager. In this case, um, is Lincoln Tempest. Um, you can check, um, the schools can ask to speak to him and he will take it up from there. If no response or resolution within five days after logging that call, so say by next week, Thursday, the school has still not gotten any answer or any feedback, they are then, um, by the, they then can um, ask to speak to the services manager, which in this case would be Cecil, but I know Cecil splits his team between Quinton and Carl, if I'm not mistaken. If there's no joy after speaking to Cecil and Carl and you guys still and the schools are still having a problem, you are then um, free to contact our director, who is Mr. Lat uh, Louis Latahan, um, and we'll then do the necessary escalations and Louis will then do uh, get the necessary um, peoples involved to get your call um, resolved. Um, this slide is just with regards to the escalation processes. So Louis Latahan is our director. Um, Lincoln is our technology manager as well as Reggie. And then Cecil obviously is the services manager for Metro North and Metro Central. 
And these details are on the school's portal as well, if the schools need to get hold of it for, for any reason. And then at turnaround times or resolution times, um, resolution times for internet and, and server and mail, these are the utmost important services that we um, that we feel that the school needs to have open and um, working on the, on at all times because this is the main forms of communication. So although we have an internet service provider that is CETA um, and we are um, up, up ligated to a SLA with them, or we are, are governed by an SLA with them, we try and still stick to our two day turnaround time. Although they might take a little bit longer due to um, reasoning of their own, but we should have, if it's not a complete resolution, it will at, at least have been a um, communication with regards to the school as to what the status of the internet server or mail problems are. Workstations, um, that's anything from the monitor not working, the PC box not switching on, power, um, blue screens, whatever. That is five days within five days. If you haven't gotten any feedback or any resolution, you then contact the um, and then all other incidents, IC, ICT incidents like your smart classrooms, um, a broken um, mouse or keyboard or, or anything in the admin area printing that will then be um, a five day resolution or turnaround time. OK, then, as you all know, all our schools have um, broadband or most of them have broadband. And currently we have the, the broadband um, in, Internet, which is provided by CETA and the, the Internet line or the layer, layer three is provided by um, Liquid, Liquid Telecom. So when we have a call, we log it, or when a school complains that the internet is down, we then log it with CETA. CETA will then see if they can resolve it on this side. If not, they then send it over to Liquid um, Telecoms. Um, so with the cabinet in the school, it's um, a small um, cabinet mounted normally in the admin area. That's um, we request that power to that cabinet remain on at all times, um, even during the school holidays. Reason being is that CETA monitors monitors um, this internet line. So the minute they see a drop, so we get notified, and then um, we need to confirm com um, power at uh, schools to find out if there is power. And then, I'm, and I know during school holidays, because a lot of schools buy their own um, prepaid electricity as they switch off the cabinets during the holiday. Um, the cabinets are to remain locked and keys are to be kept in a safe place. This has been questionable over the past couple of years because um, on this, when we need to confirm power at the school, we do ask uh, whoever's logged the call to just check in the cabinet or reset something for a couple of minutes. But only at that times is this cabinet to be opened and then no unauthorized um, access to the to, to this cabinet is permitted. So, for example, we've had in the past where schools have third parties install things um, at their school software or hardware and they would then store it in the CETA cabinet. Now, that's a big no-no because that's not even WCED's property. That is still CETA's property. Um, no internet access is to be reported to the service desk and not with CETA directly. In the past, we've had questions from the other um, e-learning um, champs and the e-learning sessions that we had was, what about the Wi-Fi, the public Wi-Fi that, that, that is at certain schools? That you guys can, the schools can log directly with Liquid Telecoms. There should be a number on their board that they are able to, but anything related to that seat, the cabinet or that line within the school, must be logged with um, the service desk. Um, the same with uh, burglaries, vandalism, all IT equipment or to any IT equipment must be reported to um, 
school's IT service desk um, and with a case number from SAPS and also be reported on um, the safe, safe schools um, on CMIS. Um, so if I can just come in here, are you, uh, is the question re being related to logging a call for your um, WCG schools email or is it for you to log in via the Wi-Fi? When they log a call, why should they give the personal number? No, the only reason, the only time we will ask for your personal number when the call is being logged is if you need, if the if the user or the educator or staff member needs access to Wi-Fi or they're having a problem with their Wi-Fi access, that's number one. Number two, it is for um, your emails. Um, also, be, besides your ID being your, your a unique identifier, if we don't, if you don't give out uh, your ID, we have your personal personal number as your unique identifier to make sure that it is Melissa Bailey that I'm speaking to, um, because we could have three, four different Melissa Baileys within um, the Western the um, WCG schools domain. And that is also one of the reasons why we ask your personal number or ID number so that we can establish if it is Melissa.Bailey1 or Melissa.Bailey2 or just Melissa.Bailey at WCG schools. On both ends, on the e-learning side, that is vandalism on your LAN. Everything like the computers, the APs, etc. Everything e-learning provided to the school on that side a SAPS case number is needed unfortunately that is an e-learning process on the broadband side the same applies that is also a a a CETA request so the best person to actually answer that one should be e-learning in the event or uh, what happens if it is recovered seeing that e-learning picks up the ball it's not the school picking up the ball on the on the land side um, it can be anyone um for example we've had calls being logged by um the foremans at the school because they could not access the email so they call this the systems off they give us the details we log the call um it, like i said it can be the admin person it can be the educator in the class for example if it's a smart smart classroom they will know exactly what the problem is with the particular device that is faulty however if it does come from the ICT um, person, it will also be great because then it means that there is communication flow from the person experiencing the problem to the ICT person at at the school. So then, you know, they, they will also know that there is something and, and at most times, hopefully be able to assist them before the call gets logged with the school's IT service desk. I do agree with Sharonda that it is not possible at all times for the IT person to log the call. However, when the technologist in the field receives the call, um, he normally would phone if it's something simple or something um, easy to fix over the phone, he would normally phone to the school and ask for the person who logged the call. Should it be the caretaker or whoever, they wouldn't really know what the problem, uh, problem is, then yeah, it, it delays the process. Then somebody needs to go out uh, to the school, etc. Where it could could have been resolved by a, a telephone call. So that's the only thing um, why I would recommend that either the person who had the problem log the call, or even the IT chap. Thanks. So with regards to the broadband calls, we there are two ways that we deal with the broadband calls. Um, over over the time since 2015, when broadband was initially um, set out to the schools, um, we relied mainly on the schools to call us or let us know that the internet line is off, or CETA would inform us that the internet line is off. However, things have evolved since then. So we have a system that we now monitor at the service desk. 
each of our agents have is, uh, access to a system called Iris. And we can see, um, so if a school phones in and says my internet is not working, we can see exactly is, if it is the um, um, seat the line coming into the school or if or is it actually problems with the um, Wi-Fi connections that they're having a problem um, connecting to the internet? So, for example, if they find and say, I can't connect to the internet, um, we will check to see that seat the line is up. If the seat the line is up, then to one, they're having issues maybe connecting with, to the APs, and then we will check to see, okay, which AP are they closest to, and then eliminate the call, and also then know how exactly to log the call and who to assign the call to, um, once we've got, gathered all the information from the school. Um, when we do um, do this part in the mornings, it, it's done at um, first thing at half past seven in the mornings and then again at half past 12 in the afternoon, we we go and we um, physically do a report from the seat, from the um, dashboard. It's called Iris actually, that must be changed. The Lincoln must just make a note. Um, we then found the schools to confirm power um, because that is one of the things that see, but that before we can log the call with CETA, that is what they want. So some schools get frustrated because they know that we can see the internet is down now. Why are we asking them these uh, necessary questions? But like Cecil said earlier, the more information we get, it helps in the resolution time and the time taken to actually get the school back online. So we will confirm power. Um, we will then take a contact person. In most cases, we do opt for the IC, the um, ICT, IT um, champion at the school or the IT person at the school for this. Um, and then we um, will then put them down and CETA will then, if CETA, if we can't get it resolved, CETA will then give them a call and ask them to check stuff or then escalate it further on to Liquid Telecoms. Um, reactive, like I said, schools will call us and we'll um, log the instance and then also at the same time confirm power and confirm the contact person. So that's with regards to broadband. Um, and um, we, we, I must say that with load shedding, it has caused a lot of issues with the school's broadbands where they offer two hours. And so we wait, especially when we know that load shedding has been in, um, um, scheduled for that day. If the school goes down on our system and we see that it's gone down, we wait um, for about two hours. If we know that areas um, in, in, in load shedding, we will wait for two hours to give the school a call. If they don't come up, we then call the school back immediately and say, listen, we see that your site is up. Is it load shedding or is it power related um, problems at, at the school? And then the most interesting part um, of our information session, I'm going to try not to be too long on this. Um, it's with regards to our um, centralized emails, which the school now knows as the Outlook mails. So WC provided um, email accounts to all staff. Um, in right in the beginning, it was just the admin person and the principal that had access to WCG school's email account. But now each educator, staff member, hostel member, psychologist, everyone at the school that's employed at the school, I mean, that's employed through WCED, gets a email address. Reason for that is that your pay slips now get emailed to your WCED school's um, account. So the main format is your name dot surname at WCG schools and then the school's account. It will be the school's name. If it's a primary, it will be dot primary. If it's a high school, it will be dot high or dot sec or dot combined. And that will be the format of your schools. However, this account does not have a password. And it is only can only be um, accessed via the principal or the admi administrator's email account. Um, just going to the next slide. Um, yeah, sorry. So um, an email account is needed, like I said, because your, if your pay slips are emailed to um, your email address. However, we've had numerous queries where um, educators or staff have the WC, um, WCG schools email account, but they're not receiving their pay slips. 
unfortunately, we don't deal with that part of um, the emails. We don't send out those pay slips. So those that queries need to be taken up with um, Purcell or there's an email address that we, we give out to the schools for the for them to be able to obtain the pay slip information um, from. Then with regards to email, email account creations, every staff member needs to be captured on, CMA, on CMAS um, for the uh, accounts to be created. Um, once the accounts take the, uh, whole, the whole creation of the email account takes about a, a week for a staff member's email account to be, be created. Um, reason being is that once the schools loaded the, the staff's details onto CMIS. We then get an import from CMIS at, on a specific day. And then from that, it takes us about a day or two to um, create users' accounts. We don't do individual accounts. We do a bulk upload at most two to 300 staff members at a time. And this is not just for your, for Metro Central or Metro North. It is for the whole of the Western Cape. Um, uh, so when this information is populated on CMS, um, please, if you could get the message out to the schools, these are the details that must be fully completed on the CMS because we these first names, surnames, personal numbers, ID numbers, cell numbers, we get off from CMS and that is how we create the um, user accounts. So coming back to the question earlier about the personal number, um, if if the ID number is not captured, but the personal number is there, and I have a um, Melissa Bailey and I have another Melissa Bailey at the same school or at a different school, I would then know that they are not the same persons. So the email addresses will be the same, but we'll just have a numeric number at um, at the end of the of the surname. So those are the requirements that is needed for CMOS um, when once a new staff member is uploaded. Um, then access to the school's mailbox, like I said, um, it is only the administrator and the principal um, that gets access to the school's mailbox. Um, and this is because of security reasons and for confidentiality purposes. Um, WCD uses the, the Western Cape, uh, not the Western Cape, the WCG schools email as the official mailing um, address, right? So what they do, um, the sensitive information that's sent to the, sent to the principal, um, and we then, that is why we only have the admin person and the principal access to the school's mailbox. What we do request at the at the service desk is that we've noticed that once administrators leave or principals leave or they retire um, and or they move to another school, right? The service desk doesn't get that information. So, for example, Kyle.neft is the principal at um, Athlone High School. But now Kyle retires and on our um, um, back end on, on Microsoft um, Exchange, we still have Kyle Neft as the principal. So mails are still going to Kyle Neft. But now in the meantime, Lincoln Dampies has been appointed the new principal at Athlon, at Athlon High School, but he's not getting any mails. It's because nobody has informed us that there was a change of principals at the school. So we do ask that that gets done. There is a form that the schools um, can email us um, for or call us for and we'll email them. And that form needs to be signed off by the circuit manager. The reason why we say that that form needs to be signed off with the circuit manager is because they're the only ones that would be able to give us the correct information if there has been a change of principal or admin staff at the school. That's again, just going back to um, security purposes and also for us at the service desk, when we get audited by the Auditor General for making changes on um, exchange, we need to back that with um, a, a actual hard copy of, of um, information that we received. Then, um, yeah, I've, ex I've um, explained that the schools 
doesn't have a password. Um, and then the other thing also that we advise schools to, and I know a lot of schools don't like the fact, but it's just also a security measure, is that we don't um, encourage the schools to use the Outlook app on the, the, the desktop app. Um, they are, When they go and um, log in, they need to use the following URL and sign in with the, with the details given to them. At this point, I'm just going to give over to um, Lincoln to explain the next um, MFAs. Hi, colleagues. Um, multi-factor authentication. OK, uh, what is multi-factor authentication? A time ago, um, Microsoft decided to push through an extra layer of security. What does extra layer of security entail is it's now required that each one of us must install a application on our cell phone. For, for now, the, the OTP, the SMS number that has been sent to your phone, that still applies, but that will come to an end in 2025. Having said that, it is vital that in the event your cell number changed, please do contact the service desk because you are going to struggle to get into um, your your email account. I do not want to bore you guys with all the technicalities around um, what multi-factor is. For now, all you need to know is that multi-factor authentication is just a extra layer of security. Because anybody can basically log in as you, that's why it was designed. OK, let's do the OTP tied to your cell phone. So this is just a add on extra layer, but the SMS will eventually be faded out in 2025. Um, a warranty service request, um, a warranty is um, given on all equipment that is provided by WCED to the schools. Um, there is a three-year warranty on all um, computers, um, printers, and um, everything in the smart classrooms. Um, I'm now just referring to anything that is WCD um, supplied. I'm not talking about the SLAN cabinet and I'm not talking about the CETA cabinet. So basically just PCs and printers and smart classroom um, equipment. There is a three-year service warranty on those things, on-site service warranty. However, we do distinguish, um, there is a, a, a distinguishing between warranties. So uh, in um, out-of-box warranty and then a normal, normal warranty. So out-of-box deals with when the technician comes and he sets up a new set of pieces or a PC or some equipment and it's not working from out-of-the-box. Um, we do request that schools phone the service provider directly and they will be the service provider will be known by the invoice that the school receives the details will be on the, the the delivery note and that is the service provider that the schools need to phone and log the schools however if the school does not want to do that we at the service desk we do log out of box warranties as well and also just help us keep um, a tab and then send it to um, Rani Rasmus them on the regular to say, look, this we, we see, we're picking up a trend that with these pieces that were sent out two weeks ago, this and this is, is the problems that we are fa we're facing. Um, with regards to warranty, um, if that three years service um, on-site warranty has expired, um, the school is in um, responsible for having the repairs done on their own. Or they can contact Mastic or Pinnacle, which is our main service providers, and find out by them if they will be able to do the repairs um, for them. But then that is dealt 
directly with the school and and mustic or pinnacle we don't get involved with we only get involved with the equipment that is still in the warranty pro, um, um period what we do ask the schools to please please it's a big please is that they keep the delivery slips um because we're not sure at the service desk who delivered that specific equipment to the school um and so when the when the school phones and um they come they they log a call for a warranty once it, once the call has been assigned to the technician we then ask for the delivery note so that we can get the exact serial number exact make and model of that particular equipment and then send it to the service provider on behalf of of the schools so the schools keeping the uh, they, don't, they don't need to keep their boxes or the insides of the of the the, the cardboard boxes but just the delivery note is what we ask that they keep um for a duration of three to to four years um depending on the on the warranty um of that said equipment um and then obviously we these are the people that we deal with um for out of box i said if the school wants to do it they are more than welcome to do so or contact us and we will do it um on their behalf um thank you to my colleagues to my our service this college uh, i must tell you um the uh, it champs that we work as a team and the information that was shared by uh, our service desk is vital uh, to our environment. We, as the service management side, focus on a couple of other things other than what our uh, colleagues uh, are focusing on. And but uh, we we work jointly together, and you will see most of the things that I will share with you just tie in together with 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 that with uh, that was shared now already. So without further ado, um, I just want to present to you a, a, or a short presentation from from our service desk, uh, sorry, from the, the service management side. Let me introduce myself. I'm Cecil DeVitt, the services manager for the schools in our area of Metro North and Metro Central. And we also support the service, the district office uh, staff at the two uh, various at the two districts of Central and North. So, without further ado, let me just start uh, by 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 giving you a quote: "The importance of the IC, IT champion or the teacher at the school. Uh, we see it as a vital component in our environment." So, I read you this quote where it says, "We need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher's hand." because it is the pen and paper of our time and it is the lens through which we experience much of the world of our world so i see the value and i'm sure you too see the value of ict within our schools and how important it is because this is the new way forward i spoke to my colleague which is a little bit younger than what i am and i said to him you know when i started especially primary school we had those desks with the with the holes in it, and I'm sure some of you can still remember those desks. And those desks, just those holes indicated where our predecessors, our parents, and those older than us used to have the ink that was placed in those holes, and they used to use the ink to write on. So when I started school, we, um, we fortunately didn't have ink any longer. But we could see still what has transpired before us. We use ballpoint pens and all these fancy things. And now we are in a different, in a new era where we use IT. Our children go to school with laptops and, and uh, notebooks and all these fancy things which they communicate with the world out there. So that is how the world evolves. And I'm sure in a couple of years time, it would be something very different. We are fortunate to play a, a major role within this transition, and it is fantastic. But I still want to maintain that the equipment, that the IT equipment is only a tool. Teachers and IT champions and yourselves are very important for education to take place. So the next quote I also have is that technology will not replace 
great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. Simply meaning that the, the tools that we use are simply a tool. Teaching is still very important. Teachers are very important in our environment, and that's how we connect. You know, there are some processes in place, as we've now heard, but people are more important. And the fact that we can communicate on this level is fantastic. So do not be uh, intimidated by the equipment um, colleagues. Let us just use it as a tool. So in our environment, we have something called broadband, and I'm sure many of you have heard it. We work with it on a daily basis. Um, broadband simply means the internet that comes into your school. Each and every school, we have got 1,300 and odd schools, and the Western Cape government, we are connected to the internet um, each and every school via a broadband pipe that was enabled by the Western Cape government. So each school has its own internet. Some a little bit faster than others, but it's a work in progress in order to get all schools up to a minimum connectivity level of one gigabit per second. At the moment, the fastest schools are at 200 megabit uh, per second. So we're getting there to connect everybody on that same speed. So each and every school has a thing called a cabinet, a broadband cabinet or a CETA cabinet. We've got a nice photograph here that all our schools have. That is the broadband connectivity coming into your school. So basically you've got a, it says L2 switch and an L3 switch. Bottom line, what it means, that's the internet connectivity coming into your school and it connects your school to the outside world to give you internet. This is just a couple of pictures of what you find within that CETA cabinet at your school. A one access device, front and the back, just to show you the cable. So layer two or L2 simply means that physical cable that comes into the school. You've probably seen at certain schools there were some trenches dug and a cable was laid uh, to your school if you have received a fiber cable and that cable connects to your broadband cabinet and it connects into that device. It's called a one access device. Then from the one access device, it connects to your layer three device, which is a switch. And that switch connects at the back end to our service provider, which is uh, CETA. And in the front end, those cables connect to your computer or your access point, etc., to give you access to the internet. This is just in brief what you would see in this CETA cabinet at your school. That is the power injector. That is the fiber cable coming into the switch. Fiber ONT device connects the fiber. Um, that is basically the CETA switch that you see. And colleagues, that switch, that cabinet belongs to CETA. CETA is our service provider, and the request is that we do not, we do not as far as possible, access or open that CETA switch. Not even us as CEI technologists are, are connected to that CETA or can just open the, the CETA cabinet. We need permission, and you need special permission from your principal to open and touch things that are in there. That's why I showed you a couple of pictures. We will also share this presentation so that you have an idea of what is in the cabinet. And and yeah, so they don't have to go and look physically. Just trust me that that is in the cabinet. So you must only have access to the cabinet to assist when troubleshooting. So please do not open the, the cabinet. Sometimes we've seen that the, that the keys are still hanging there or is still in the cabinet. Take it out, put it in a safe place. Give it to the principal, let him put it in the safe. Uh, at times, just to save time, uh, a technologist would phone the school and then maybe ask you, just open the cabinet, see if those lights are on or if that cable is connected. That is when you do open the CETA cabinet, uh, colleagues. And then lastly, the cabinet must be locked at all times with the key stored in the safe, as I've mentioned. Now I'm to speak about the land environment. You probably heard about that all the time. 
Um, so we spoke about broadband. LAN is simply when computers are connected to this to the broadband. You can find some schools still have a lab, a functional lab. Other schools have uh, internet and, and connectivity all around the school, which is called a SLAN environment. So let me just unpack that a little bit for you. These are the types of devices you will find at your school. A server, that's a type of server. A blade server and a tower server, it does exactly the same thing. It just looks different. Some schools have a cabinet and that blade server fits beautifully into it. Before, when we didn't have those cabinets, we used to have tower servers, big black thing that we placed into um, that cabinet. But it's the same thing. They have the same capacity and the same power, etc. Simply looks different. And then we have a switch we, which connect the server and whatever is on the server to all the various workstations. Each and every port that you see on that switch connects to a workstation. So if there's a light, it shows there is connectivity. If there's no light, then obviously you won't be connected to the server, you won't be connected to the internet. The land technologies that we have in our schools, and we put this in the slide so that you know that all schools are not the same and all schools have not received the same equipment. I saw on one of the questions that was posed by some of the schools is how can I get the equipment? I see my neighboring schools have a smart classroom, have all these various projects, and at our schools, nothing is going on. How do I get those things? Colleagues, simply speak to your e-learning advisor. In this case, you can speak to Bradley and Melissa in Metro North. Metro Central, you speak to Andre van Sale or Gail Valentine. They would be able to assist you to get onto whichever project that is at the moment. Um, we as CEI look after the equipment, make sure that it is functional, that it's working, etc. Technologists come to the school, but we are not the givers of the stuff. Speak to the education department. Those are the e-learning project, um, e-learning coordinators, and they will help you to uh, attain the equipment according to the criteria that they use. So in your schools, you will have various projects. At the moment, you, if the schools are connected to the internet, they will have a smart classroom because a smart classroom simply connects the laptop that they receive and the OVA projector, uh, sorry, the whatever projector, that one, and uh, um, it, it connects it to the internet and so that to assist the teacher to give, uh, uh, to assist her with a, a teaching and to project it on the board, on the whiteboard and so on. Some schools have one, two smart classrooms, other schools have many smart classrooms, depending on the project and the size of the school and so on. Um, yeah, sorry, data projectors they will receive. That is Wi-Fi enabled, a notebook, interactive whiteboard and visualizers at certain schools. The, the latest project at schools is also the USO project, which is sponsored by our cell phone companies. You get a MTN a USAO project school, you get the Vodacom Cell C. It is simply those cell phone companies that sponsor certain um, a, a lab to the school and connect them to the Wi-Fi. As I've mentioned, there are plus minus 1,300 schools already connected to our broadband. Um, Almost a thousand of those schools are SLAN schools. Uh, my colleague um, Kyle Neff will unpack a little bit what the differences are between SLAN and broadband schools, etc., or SLIM schools. In fact, I see it's my job to explain that. So between SLIM and SLAN, what is the difference between SLIM and SLAN? Where does the name come from? I explained actually to Carl uh, to Kyle earlier. SLIM simply means it's um, as when you go to Edgar's or any of those shops, you, do, you don't get the regular shirt that I'm wearing, you get a slim fit shirt. Um, tongue in cheek, um, what it basically means is that all schools will have received broadband, the internet coming into the school. And then the, a decision had to be made, how can we leverage off this internet? How can we 
give equipment to certain schools to make use or proper use of the internet that the schools have received. Because, you know, money is always an issue and the WCED don't have all the money at once. They decided, OK, let's have a slim project, meaning that let's give every school something to leverage off the broadband. That is an extra PC and two access points, APs where the Wi-Fi can be given to. We start off in the in the school's um, admin uh, block. So almost as all schools are slim schools. They started off with being a slim school. So they've got the broadband. They each school have received two access points, one in the in the principal's area, in the admin block, and one admin, uh, one access point further down in the school, maybe the lab or the library or wherever, so that the broadband can be used by as many people as possible. That is slim, simply so that so that as much as pro possible, as many people can use it. Then they've got another project running side by side where the school is becoming a slant school, where money is provisioned for that in stages. Certain schools are selected via your e-learning um, facilitators. And then those schools that has become a slant school, they, they have been Wi-Fi all over the school. They've received many access points. They've received switches and new labs and all those things. It is envisaged that all school will become a slant school eventually. At the moment, out of the 1,300, there are 1,000 schools that are slammed already, and it is a work in progress. Every once a month, I'm in such a meeting where the progress is being discussed. We are now 990-odd schools and so on. I am now going to hand over, colleagues, that is my portion of the presentation. Hand over to, to my colleague, um, Kyle Neft, who is the chief technologist and also the team leader in my environment. Um, and Kyle will, will update you on the nitty gritties of, of all the equipment in our environment. So Kyle, over to you, my friend. All right, thank, thank you, Sasso. You. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. My name is Carl Neft. I am the ICT team leader for Metro North and Metro Central. Uh, what I'll be covering today is basically giving you an overview of a slim configuration and a SLAN configuration school. Uh, starting off with a slim school. Okay, so SLIM setup is basically managed by CETA. CETA is the uh, State Information Technology Agency. Uh, they are responsible for all the networks uh, in the province. Uh, a SLIM school has a CETA switch uh, that connects the school to the internet, and it comes with two wireless access points. The two wireless access points are installed, one in the admin block, which brings WCG schools Wi-Fi to the admin area. And the second access point is installed in the uh, in the computer room, which will basically allow the learners or the teachers to access uh, the WCG schools Wi-Fi network in the computer lab. So that is part of, that is classified as a slim school. In addition to that, a slim school is also shipped with 20 mini PCs. So initially they got two APs and 20 mini PCs. Uh, the mini PCs were, were, were sent out in order for the learners to utilize the internet connectivity. Uh, schools may request an additional access point via the e-learning unit. The additional AP can be installed in other areas of the school to extend the WCG school's uh, Wi-Fi coverage. Okay, moving on to a SLAN setup. So a SLAN setup is a fully fledged WCG schools network in your school. So not only do you have WCG schools Wi-Fi in the admin and in the computer room, but you also have it now throughout all the classrooms throughout the entire school. So we have a company called BNC, which is the Blue Network Consortium. 
they are responsible for the installation of the SLAN network as well as the management of the network. So the CETA switch will be installed in the CETA cabinet as usual. Uh, these are all new components. Once the school gets upgraded from a slim school to a SLAN school, they will receive a, a cabinet, a few cabinets spread throughout the school, a few access points uh, spread throughout the classrooms. In addition to that, they will also receive uh, cabling infrastructure. So each uh, classroom will receive a network point uh, in order for, for learners or teachers to, to connect via the network cabling instead of Wi-Fi. Okay, so just to recap, the difference between a slim school and a SLAN school is the number of wireless access points that the school will have. In addition, a SLAN school will have a network points installed in order for users to connect via network cabling. So those are the primary differences between slim and SLAN. Thank you. Moving on, the next topic we'll cover is this touching base on CAT and IT, which is one of our critical functions uh, in CEI. My um, colleague Quentin De Vett, uh, his, uh, his primary role is to ensure that we have minimal incidents during the CAT exam and IT exam, which takes place in September and October. So just to go up. So CEI is, a fully, is fully committed to supporting all schools with any technical challenges experienced during the CAT IT examination. Throughout the year, CEI is, is ensuring that all the CAT workstations have been upgraded to the latest EduLearn operating systems. This will ensure that our workstations have the latest Windows updates and antivirus updates. Currently, uh, we are rolling out EduLearn 8.3 that was happening last year, uh, which is based on Windows 10. This year, there is a new EduLearn version, EduLearn 9, which is based on Windows 11. So we are in the process of pushing out Windows 11 to the CAT labs this year. During the CAT exam, a standby roster and the service desk is on standby on the day of the CAT exam. A special hotline will be made available as well on the day that CAT teachers can call or report any issues. Uh, we have uh, we have assigned a number of schools to each technologist. So on the day of the CAT exam, if there are any issues, they can respond immediately. Uh, the special focus for us during the months of September and October with the prelims taking place and the finals taking place in October. Uh, we've also, just to add on, schools have invested in generators and inverters to combat load shedding. Um, yeah, load shedding has caused havoc uh, throughout uh, the exams in the past, especially uh, with the PCs, you know, because with the SLAN network, the SLAN network has inverters. The inverters are able to keep the network up and running during load shedding. However, the workstations, they don't have any backup power. So schools have started investing in generator inverters to, to uh, keep the workstations up and running as well. Okay, so for the CAT exam process, many of you must have heard of centralized services and standalone mode. So just to confirm the differences between the two, centralized services, you are writing online, so on the network. So each learner will log on with a domain account. Those accounts uh, were requested by a service desk and sent to the school, right? Each learner logs on, the, the, the teacher deploys the data via the server. Once the data has been deployed, the learner renames the folder and they can start the exam. Once the exam has been completed, the teacher can then run a script that retrieves all the data and stores it into one folder. And that folder is then burnt onto a CD. The difference between standalone mode, which is our backup mode, there is no network at all with standalone mode. So the teacher would have to copy the exam data to each workstation manually. This is done. This is done. This needs to, to the, the teacher has to do this process for backup purposes. In the event there's a network failure on centralized services, you would have to revert back to back to standalone mode. 
in standalone mode, once, you, once you're in standalone mode and the learners have started the exam, the teacher would have to collect the data from each PC once the exam has been completed. So those are the primary differences between centralized services and standalone mode. Centralized services is a lot quicker in terms of deploying your data and retrieving your data versus standalone mode. Hi, these, this is one of the challenges that a lot of users are experiencing in the school, and most likely it's always due to the incorrect settings that is configured. So this is a one pager that basically just highlights what the settings should be in order for you to, to successfully to connect onto the WCD Schools Network. Uh, if you need further information on this, you can contact the school's it.wcdschools.gov.za website. We do have some tutorials and videos to show you how to connect to Wi-Fi. And what, what I do want to point out is the proxy host name currently being used in schools. Schools need to ensure, or users need to ensure that you have the proxy.wcgschools.gov.za proxy configured. If you are using 10.0.2 for 1 or 2 to 6, your internet experience might not be as great. For further information, as I mentioned, you could visit the school's IT portal or you could log a call with the school's IT service desk. Uh, basically, they will, they will assist with the first line support if it needs to be escalated to the district, uh, which is it will come to us and we will assist with, uh, with the second line support and first line if needed. Um, but basically, we can assist with your settings and, 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 and ensure that it's working or that it's uh, working properly. Escalation procedure of a call, OK. But colleagues, in a nutshell, that is uh, basically what we do. So any sort of uh, incidents, experience in the schools, any sort of desktop support, IT support that is needed, a call would need to be logged with the school's IT service desk. A reference number will be issued, and we will attend to that call within three days to have it resolved. Um, if uh, if no success, like I said, we can just contact service desk. Service desk will contact CISL, and then we will definitely try to resolve anything that that was uh, that wasn't attended to. So, with regards to the e champion at the school, which would be you, who joined the session today, you have two important functions, and that is on-site user support as well as the promotion of integration. So with regards to on-site user support, you will assist the learners and the teachers as well as administrative staff at the school with any technical queries that they might have. Now, you might not have the answers at times, and then you contact your e-advisor at the district and they will be able to assist you with the answers which you are struggling with. Secondly, you will also provide upskilling at the school because you have attended sessions to upskill yourself in certain apps. So on request and when needed in a structured manner, you will liaise with the e-advisor and they will guide you through the training sessions that you will have at your school. Also remember that there is daily training sessions happening and those sessions are shared by the e-advisors in the district to your principal and you can join those sessions to upskill yourself even more. Then I see the administrator of the school, meaning that you will be the stock taker and you will maintain the asset register. So if you are at school and you see there's a delivery or you're informed there will be a delivery of tablets or new devices for the learners or teachers, then you need to make sure that you add those devices onto the asset register. That will ensure that you know exactly what is at school and you will also then be tasked with creating a sign in sign out procedure at the school. With regards to the promotion of integration at the school, you will assist the teachers with lesson plans by adding or incorporating the e-learning aspect into it. So you will inform teachers of the tools and materials that are available, and you will also recommend the appropriate ICT tools that teachers can use to enhance the teaching and learning in the classroom. With regards to the e-projects, your school will be involved in certain projects. Not all schools are always involved in it. They are carefully selected by head office. And those projects will always provide valuable resources and support, as well as opportunities for you to grow in your professional development. 
So some schools will receive tablets and some schools will receive devices for teachers that they can use. You need to be the person that is aware as the e champion. You need to be aware of those projects so that you can make sure that your school benefit from those projects. And then lastly, the e committees. Ensure that you are a member of the e committee in order to create an e culture at your school. You will be responsible to make sure that the teachers, your colleagues, the learners know that they'll be using e-learning and how the teachers can use e-learning within the classroom. You also need to advocate for the use of technology in your school. And if you are in need of support or guidance, you can contact the e-learning e-advisors, sorry, the e-advisors at the district. Metro Central will be Andre Van Zell and Gil Valentine. Metro North will be Brady Dirks and Melissa Bailey.